Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the all new Mazda CX-90. Before we get in this video though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Southtown Mazda here in Utah for giving me some time with this CX-90. I'm going to include a link to their inventory in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And by the way, this particular CX-90 is still available for the time being. So if you're interested, reach out to them. And then on a side note, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So under the hood, we have a turbocharged 3.3 liter inline six that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 280 horsepower and then 332 pound feet of torque with this particular model. And then fuel economy is 24 around town and then 28 on the highway. Now, before we go over the front end, I do wanna mention if you wanna see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Starting with the hood, it's actually really massive and notice it's like flat there in the center with distinctive lines on either side. So it's simplistic, but it looks very muscular. I'm actually a huge fan of these lights. They looked kind of funky in the photos and videos and everything, but in person they look really cool, especially with a little daytime running light right there. And then look at the chrome here on the grill. You also have that on the Mazda logo as well. And then look at the little camera there below the logo. And then I like this kind of area right here and then look more chrome trim at the bottom and parking sensors in the front end as well. And putting it all together, it obviously does have a lot of design cues from the CX-9, but it just feels more modern. And I would say it looks more luxurious as well. Now, coming around the side here, time wheel setup is 275, 45, 21 on the front and over in the rear as well. And then you guys can see here with the wheel design, I think it's pretty cool looking with all of the silver. Notice our unpainted fender flares and you can see that trim continues along the side with little silver trim. And then you can see this trim piece and if you look really close, it actually says inline six on it. And then notice the mirror caps are body painted as well as the door handles. And then taking a look at the full side profile here, again, you can see kind of like some design elements from the CX-9, but for the most part, it looks quite different. So here's our key fob. We got the Mazda logo there on the front. You guys can see we've got our unlock and our lock function as well as the opening for the hatch, which we'll just press that right now. Now popping inside of the CX-90, you'll notice that we've got a decent amount of storage space behind the third row, pretty standard for this segment. And underneath, you can see all the toolkit and everything. And notice with the third row, we can fold it down. We just have to pull these straps right here. Actually do it like in on motion, there you go. And then you can fold the seat down. We actually have some charging port action back here as well, which is pretty cool. And then I wonder how easy it is to get this back into place with one. It's, it's easy to do with one hand, frankly. So I think that's a big positive. When you're all done with the rear, just press this button right here and that will lower the hatch right back down. Now these taillights are very interesting. Notice how they go pretty deep into the tailgate. This is like new for Mazda. And then of course we got our CX-90 badge here. And then I like how it says E Sky Active G there for the other badge. I think that's pretty cool. And then we got more parking sensors here at the bottom. The lighting today is absolutely horrible, but this is the rest of the rear of the CX-90. And I think that it actually looks really good, especially from like this three quarters angle here. Now popping inside, you guys can see we've got this sunshade here in the rear and then look at the trim on the top of the door panel and then you can see the padding and stitching down below and then decent storage at the bottom. Now here are these seats. I think they've got a really cool design. This reminds me of like from the CX-50 actually. You can see the stitching there on the side as well. Legroom here in the rear is actually really solid. We've got a storage pocket on top of that. You can see some vents here in the center, USBs. We've got our own climate zone as well as heated seats. And then headroom back here is also really good. Now in the third row, pretty typical in terms of leg room. And I think it's pretty cool. We got these little vents here on this side, as well as some USB action. I do want to mention these seats in the third row, they still look very premium. So I think that's a big plus. And then header back here is also really good. And now taking a look at the front door panel here, you guys can see the trim at the top and look at the silver trim down below and then the padding down below with the stitching. All of our window controls right here. We also have our mirror adjustments. The mirrors do power fold in and they have blind spot monitoring. Now taking a look at the front seat here, you can see perforated all down the center, still has that like insert there. And then look at the stitching on the sides. And then we also have our power adjustments on the side as well. Got our memory seat functions right here. This is for the hatch. That's for the safety tech right there. You guys can see with the parking sensors and then your traction control as well. And then the steering wheel itself, it looks like it is, yeah, manually adjustable. Thank you. 
Now taking a look at the steering wheel, really nice material use all around, and you got the stitching on the center, which just makes it feel a more premium. We've got adaptive cruise control with this. We've got some of our controls for the center stack. And yeah, I don't know, this just has like a nice premium look to it. And then obviously regular stocks there on the back. Now here is our gauge cluster. So we've got this full digital gauge cluster here, the CX-90. And notice there in the corner, I can scroll through a bunch of different menus, see different bits of info on the car and systems within the car itself. Um, but I, I like the design of this, because again, it, it like goes to like Mazda's normal design with their gauge clusters, if that makes sense, but it just is obviously fully digital. That's pretty cool with the drive modes. <laughs> yeah, you got like a little animation right there with each of them. And look at that little flip. Of the, I wonder what the off-road mode looks like then. I'll flip with the gauge cluster. That's pretty, that's pretty exciting. Now this does have a full 360 camera system. As you can see, resolution, frankly, is really uh, solid with this camera system. And notice when I go to drive from reverse, it goes from the backup camera to the forward facing camera. So I like it a lot. Now, just like other modern Mazdas, this has an infotainment screen. There's not a touch screen. Everything's controlled via a dial. And as for like the screen itself, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a change compared to what I've seen in the other cars like the you know CX-50, for example. So if you're used to Mazda's infotainment screen, you'll be used to this. Now to mention that the whole dash is soft touch and then you can see the trim down below here with the stitching in it. I think that looks fantastic. So it definitely gives it a more premium feel. And the overall design with this definitely has that more like luxury car appearance. And it has like this, um, it's hard to explain, but like this, very like sturdy appearance, like similar to new Audis. So I think they did a good job with that. Anyways, we've got our dual zone climate controls down below. This has heated and ventilated seats as well as a heated steering wheel. So we'll call this little area our charging area with the CX-90. And then you guys can see this trim that goes over the cup holders. And then look at the shifter here. It's very interesting. So you move it over for reverse, as you can see. And then getting from reverse to drive is actually really quick. It's just in the park that you kind of have to shift it over. It's interesting. And then you got your hill descent control. That's just to pop on with the camera view. Analog control, well, the only control rather for the infotainment system and the shortcut buttons that are associated with that, your parking brake, your auto hold. And then this has the double open center console. So it's like two different lids. Um, decent storage space inside. And I love the like padding and trim there on the top. I think that looks nice. And then popping into the glove box, lined with felt, pretty normal sized. And then up top here, we got a sunglass holder, and then we do have our controls for the full panoramic sunroof. And so, yeah, another nice feature. So sorry, there's a little bit of glare on the window, so it's kind of hard to see the window sticker. Anyways, this is a CX-90. Um, this is a premium plus. So this isn't like the fully loaded version of the CX-90, but it's, I mean, you guys saw it had tons of options. Anyways, base MSRP is 52,950 on this one. After all options, this one stickers for $54,920. Let's see how the new CX-90 drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility of the HUD and hope you can now see the heads up display. Both the mirrors do have blind spot monitoring and throughout the rest of the rear. And that shifter does take a second to get used to, but I will say if you were in a situation where you had to quickly go from drive to reverse, which happens if you, you know, are in like a tight parking lot, this is the best shifter I have ever used to switch between the two. Seriously, it's 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 really like seamless with the action. So I think Mazda did a good job. And I like the feel of it too. Like Mazda did a really good job with a lot of the tactile touch points here inside of the CX-90. But setting off, my goodness, first off, ride quality is really good. It's very smooth. I do want to mention, I will be uh, doing CX-90 versus the world is my plan. What I mean by that is I'm going to try to compare this to as many of the other three row crossovers as I can. Um, so, you know, Kia Telluride, Honda Pilots, uh, Toyota Highlander, that one's going to be a hard one to find. Well, we are continuing along. I guess that they're ripping up the road here, so it's going to make me have to uh, change my driving route because this is not <laughs> really going to work out very well from a time perspective. Um, but yeah, I will say, seat comfort's really good in the CX-90. The suspension's really solid as well, so I think they've done a good job with that. Um, the 21-inch wheels, they do kind of lend um, to you feeling a little bit more here on the road in terms of bumps and everything. But, you know, that's obviously an easy fix. You can you can always do smaller wheels if you want. But the thing that I really want to see is acceleration. Oh, man. 
<laughs> we'll get another one up here in just a second. But first off, I, it's like a bunch of lightsabers in the gauge cluster for that. That is so cool. What is the off-road mode again? I know I just did this like two seconds ago. That's not as cool. The sport mode, that's the, that's the cool one. But man, that's torquey. And this isn't even the most like powerful tune on this powertrain. You can get a higher horsepower version of this powertrain with the CX-90. I actually want to see the uh, manual shifts with this. And we do have paddle shifters here. They're really small, so it's kind of hard to, like you can't really see them from the driver perspective. You can feel them, but they're super small. My guess as to why Moz is not showing them is they're just plastic. And so I think that they didn't want uh, the paddle shifters to kind of run the overall like nice feeling, uh, you know, design by having plastic paddle shifters popping out a bunch. But, My goodness. <laughs> this thing's, this thing's good, wow. And the gear shifts honestly are really, like they're smooth, but they're also like, they have a, they have a, they have, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but they, they've got like a pretty quick feel to them. Yeah, this transmission's great. Oh man. Yeah, this is, this is a lot better than I initially expected, to be honest. Um, again, judging by like, you know, the photos and everything, I don't, I don't watch other people's reviews because I wanna be unbiased with mine. Um, I don't know what anyone else is saying about this, but what I wanna say is, for the segment that this is in, for the price point this is in, really solid powertrain. Again, this is the base powertrain, holy guacamole, right? It's crazy, there's a more powerful version. Um, yeah, Mazda, Mazda killed it. I, I think this is one of those situations where like, as soon as people like realize what this is, it's like, yeah, it's gonna sell like crazy. So let me know what you guys think about the new CX-90, but I'm super impressed and I'm excited to do the comparisons, but I have a feeling this is gonna win quite a few of them, if not all of them.